Hello everyone, this is your intro to managerial accounting quiz or your chapter 18 quiz on Pearson. For this quiz you're going to have to do two things. You're going to have to make a cost of goods manufactured schedule. Uh, this is a document which keeps track of the total costs of goods that you produce during the period which you finished manufacturing. And that last part is the important part. We're not looking for the total amount of money we put into all of the stuff because we would still be working on goods. We're only looking for the total cost of everything that finished production during the period. To do this, you're going to need a couple of things. You are going to need the, both the beginning and ending balances of your three inventory categories, which are your direct materials, your whip, and your finished goods. And then you're going to need some other pertinent info, like how much uh, direct materials you purchased during the period, what your indirect labor costs were, what your administrator salaries were, etc. This is all compiled for you on the left hand side so you can follow along. On the cost of goods manufactured schedule, the first thing you always start with is your beginning whip. So if we go and we see uh, on the left side, second line down, our beginning whip inventory was zero. We're going to throw that into the right hand most column. To that, we need to proceed by figuring out our direct materials used. This also starts with beginning inventory, but at this time it's beginning direct materials inventory. So we take our beginning direct materials inventory from our information, which is 13,000, and we add to it any purchases of direct mats that we made during the period. First line other under other info tells us that we purchased $30,000 worth of direct materials. If we started with 13,000 and we bought another 30,000, that means throughout the month in this case, we had $43,000 worth of direct materials available. Well, we're not trying to figure out what was available, we're trying to figure out what we actually used. So what we're going to do now is we're going to deduct our ending direct materials inventory. From our information, it tells us that our ending direct materials was 8,500. Which means if we had 43,000 at one point, and we have 8,500 left at the end of the period, we must have used $34,500 worth of direct materials during the month. And that number goes into the center column. That is the first of our three cost components. The second one is direct labor, which we can take right from our information. A uh, third line from the bottom tells us that our direct labor expenses were $17,000. The third cost component is our manufacturing overhead. These are all of the costs that we have associated with production that you can't trace directly to each and every job. Things like rent, things like utilities, things like depreciation. It's impossible to say okay this much of our monthly rent went towards making this particular job uh, and this much went towards another job it's all pulled together you're doing all the jobs under one roof so we need to find a way to spread this out our plant rent in this case was six thousand our plant utilities was two thousand our depreciation of our plant assets our production equipment etc was three thousand and we had indirect labor of 300. That's going to be things like custodians, etc. We add that together, all of our costs which are necessary for production but can't directly be traced to each individual job is going to total up to $11,300. Now we have all three of our cost components. We had $34,500 worth of direct materials, we had $17,000 worth of direct labor, and we had $11,300 worth of manufacturing overhead. Well, if we add those three together, we get our total manufacturing costs, which were incurred during the period. And that's going to add up to $62,800. Next, we have to find our total manufacturing costs to account for. And that's pretty simple to get to. You take your beginning whip inventory, and you add to it the total manufacturing costs that were incurred during the period. Because we had beginning whip of zero, and we had total manufacturing costs incurred of $62,800, our total manufacturing cost to account for is also going to be $62,800. That is all the cost that we've put into manufacturing during the period. But we don't want to have the cost of everything that we're working on, we only want to figure out the cost of what we finished producing, what finished manufacturing. So how we find that is we take the total cost that went into all of our manufacturing process and we subtract out the portion of those costs that were put into inventory that we are still working on when the period ends. That is our ending whip inventory. And from our information, we can see that our ending whip inventory is $1,100. So if we had $62,800 worth of costs we had to account for, 
but 1100 of that is for goods that we are still working on. The cost of goods that we finished manufacturing during the period is going to be $61,700. And that number is important because we're going to need it to prepare our income statement. And here is Beaver's Well Pump's income statement. Like all income statements, the first thing we're going to start with is our revenue. And the information on the side tells us that our net sales revenue was 114000 So we're going to put it in the right hand side. From that, we need to subtract out our cost of goods sold. Uh, and this time it's not given to us, so we're going to have to compute it. And the way that we compute it is we take our beginning finished goods inventory to start with. And our beginning FG inventory, according to our information, is zero. We are going to add to that the cost of goods manufactured. That was the $61,700 that we got from the cost of goods manufactured schedule. Yes, you have to make the COGM schedule just so you can have this one number on your income statement. So the whole purpose of that document is to help you prepare this document. So if we take our beginning finished goods and add to it the cost of goods manufactured, we get the cost of goods that were available for sale. Everything we had that was in a sellable condition during the period cost us $61,700 to make. But we're not looking for the cost of goods we could have sold, we're looking for the cost of goods we actually sold. So what do we have to do? We have to subtract out our ending finished goods inventory. And our information tells us that we ended with $5,300 worth of costs in finished goods that had yet been sold. So if we could have sold $61,700 worth of stuff, but we have $5,300 of it left over, that means the cost of the goods that we actually sold is going to be $56,400. It's going to allow us to figure out our gross profit, which is found by taking net sales revenue and subtracting out your COGS. $114,000 minus $56,400 means that Beaver's Well Pumps had a gross profit of $57,600 during the period. To take this gross profit and convert it into operating income, we need to subtract out our selling and administrative expenses. These are the expenses that a manufacturing company has which are not directly related to production. So administrator salaries is going to be one because our administrators oversee the company. They're not there actually making these well pumps. Delivery expenses, assuming that we have to pay the cost to ship these to customers when they buy them, well that's not a part of our cost of production, that is a part of our cost of sales, so it goes in selling and administrative expenses. And then lastly, advertising expenses. Again, necessary cost for a business, but it is not a cost directly related to production, so it goes into selling and administrative. Our admin salaries were $5,900, our delivery expenses were 1000 and our advertising expenses were $1,400, all taken from the other info section of your information on the left hand side. When we add all of these up, we get total SNA, selling and administrative expenses of $8,300. To find your operating income, it is just gross profit minus your total selling and administrative expenses. So $57,600 minus that $8,300 we had in SNA expenses means that Beaver's Well Pumps had an operating income of $49,300 during the month of December 20XX. This is not their net income because there's still other things that could be subtracted from this like interest that has to be paid on loans or taxes or etc but this is where we're going to stop for right now. Operating income was 49300 Good luck on your quiz.